Hi, thanks for clicking. So today I'm going to show you how I would draw a Mako shark using simple shapes and simple lines to build a construct that we can then work upon. So I begin by drawing an ellipse. That's obviously the overall shape, the, the main mass of the body of the shark, just a long ellipse. Now I tried to divide this ellipse into a few different sections. Obviously the contour, um, the shape of the, the shark, it's more curved at the top and more flat at the bottom. So I'm gonna illustrate this by doing a flat line to divide the upper uh, body from the lower body. And then the upper section as the top of the back curves around to meet the dorsal fin, that's gonna be more slightly curved. So we've now divided this ellipse into three sections. We've got the upper back, the side, and then the underbelly. That should hopefully already give this ellipse some form. These next lines are just to represent where the tail will flow. Just rough triangular shapes made of these two diagonal lines that taper off to the edge where we'll eventually build the tail from just to elongate the body. And we'll do the same at the other side for obviously the head and the same kind of idea, just a triangle, pointy at both ends. We can adapt that later. But as you can see, the divide of the upper and lower sections and the side section, you can already see it start to take form. I'm just gonna add another ellipse here just to help me recognize the structure of the shark's head. A mako shark has quite prominent jaws and um, it, it does have a bit more form around this area. So this ellipse helps me kind of gauge the 3D aspect of that area. It makes me aware that I need to make some changes that the structure changes from the body to the head. This next line is just a a center line to give me an idea as to where I can place the uh, the fin, both um, the uh, the flipper fin um, and the dorsal fin. It also helps accent the contour, the overall shape, to show that it's not just a flat thing. It reminds me that it's always going to be curving around the center here. just add a couple of extra lines just to highlight where I'd like to show with the tail. I'm trying to make the angles slightly different to each other so it doesn't look too uniform. And the angle of the shark that I'm drawing, it's, it's kind of swimming, not directly towards you, but is at a slight angle. relatively closely, but I will always allow myself to improvise should anything appear off. I'll just sketch in some lines following these guidelines and adding the smaller details as we go.
obviously, as I mentioned before, the shark is swimming at a slight angle toward the viewpoint. Um, so the overall shape of these things that are coming toward you are not a side profile view. So the, uh, the fins appear a bit thinner than they would should it be a side profile. I've added that extra inner line just to represent the side uh, to kind of give that depth effect that you can see the front of it. I'll do the same with the dorsal fin as well. Hopefully that will add to the effect. My sketch lines are really loose. I never really like to commit to one particular solid line until it's ready for it. I just like to sketch out, feel my way along. I, I feel confidence with the, the guidelines I have drawn, but it's always nice just to organically, bit by bit, just add your marks until you're happy with them without really committing to one solid line. roughly where those two ellipses join, um, just above where the start of the mouth is. A nice big eye, big circular eye, obviously will be relatively dark. With, with, with animals like sharks, uh, when there's not too much texture from a distance, um, it's really nice to, to really be, be bold with the, the features that they have, um, like the eye and the, uh, the mouth. So really making them contrast against the, the plainness of, of the skin, of the texture of the body. central line that I drew just before the fin and uh, just these lines obviously you need to add them to be accurate to the animal but they also help outline the the contour the shape of the body as you can see the the division lines for the upper side and lower sections of the body I'm slightly contouring these lines round more just to show the shape a bit more to show that it's more flat on the underside and more straight on the side as we can see that more but it will curve towards the top of the body and just embellish some details heavy some lines that you're more confident with just to solidify them um, and I'm just going to use the remaining time for this sketch it's been about 10 minutes so far I think um, I'll just use the remaining time to uh, do some value shading to really give the 
creature more form by by showing the shadows and highlights. I'll, I'll obviously just draw in the the shadows for now, the underbelly where the light's not reaching um, the sections, and that should hopefully give this sketch just a bit more uh, form, a bit more value to help me. hatch method um, but I'm slightly curving the lines to go along with the flow of the form that should really help give it some more body as well <laughs> I'm just embellishing these uh, these shadow areas just to solidify that I have everything in the right place. I can I can definitely see that the form is 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 what it needs to be. Once you get the shadows in there, you can you can really picture what the finished render will look like. But um, you know, if you've been following along, you can see that this is purely just been built on layering a few simple shapes in the right places, um, just a few ellipses, a few lines, and uh, just slightly adapting them as you go. And uh, be confident, be bold, don't worry about making mistakes. Uh, once again, I filmed this in, in real time, so you can see that it is such a simple process it does take practice. Um, but the thing that I like about using this method, shapes and lines, is whatever style you want to draw your piece in, whether it's uh, realistic or intended to be realistic at some point, or whether it's stylized or, or cartoon or, or, or any style, surrealism, you can just adapt these shapes. If I wanted to turn this into more of a cartoon, I can elongate the ellipse. I can, I can really play with where I put the lines and that will still following the same rules it will completely change the piece that you're drawing I'm obviously when it comes to cartoons or stylizing it to your own style uh, you can break any of the rules but by following these particular ones you can't really go wrong so just enjoy the process of of taking these shapes doing what you want with them depending upon what you want your outcome to be I might do another video where I show that. I might do certain shapes to go for a realistic version of an animal or a person and then change the shapes slightly and see what the outcome would be. this uh, sketch a bit slower than my usual pace um, just to really make sure I showed every step as clearly as I could but you can see that I can't help but speed up at this point when I feel confident in what I've done just working fast and putting marks in just instinctively where where I see them even before I think about it I'm doing it so um, once you have that foundation in place, it builds confidence. And that confidence then leads to uh, just the ability to f trust your gut, to follow your instinct. I'm fairly happy with that. <laughs>
thought I added another layer, but I guess I've drawn it on top of the shape, but that's fine. You get the idea. Mm -hmm. 